Good morning, Unity Atlanta. So happy to have you with us virtually. And today we're going to start off with one of our favorite congregational songs. So please feel free to sing along at home. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on spirit. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on spirit. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm walking and talking with my mind stayed on spirit. I'm walking and talking with my mind, stayed on spirit. I'm walking and talking with my mind, stayed on spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It ain't no harm to keep your mind, stayed on spirit. Ain't no harm to keep your mind stayed on spirit. Ain't no harm to keep your mind stayed on spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We are standing here with our minds stayed on spirit. We are standing here with our minds stayed on spirit. We are standing here with our minds stayed on spirit. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah.
happy Sunday, beloved virtual community, and namaste. The spirit in me truly welcomes, honors, embraces, and rejoices in the spirit in you. And let us begin as we are stayed on spirit, as we are filled with the energy and the light of life, as we do all things with prayer. Today we set our sights on the road ahead. Today, as we remember God's infinite compassion, God's everlasting grace, and God's unconditional love, we choose to focus on what is before us as we leave behind what is dead and what is done. Today, as we take one more courageous step forward, we remember that God is here with us, within us, in the midst of all which is occurring in our lives, right here, right now, always, and in all ways. As we keep our vision lifted, as we take each faithful footstep forward, we see a beautiful road unfolding before us, and we feel the hope of a bright and wondrous future. We know this, we claim this, we affirm this, and we give thanks for this truth and for so many blessings we are experiencing in our lives. And let us say, thank you, God, where every week of our series ready for revival, welcoming you, whether you're a regular or whether you're joining us for the very first time to this beloved community of Unity Atlanta. And we're so grateful that you could be with us. We are a positive, practical path for spiritual living, not just to look at the old, but to take the new, to live and use these wondrous teachings every day in our lives. And we are so glad to have you with us and invite you to be comfortable wherever you are as we continue in this wonderful service. One of the beauties of Beloved Community is not only having Rob Moran with us, but so many others who work on the service with us. And I'm delighted this Sunday to welcome back, finally, wherever you are, give her a round of applause representing our congregational care team and one of our future unity ministers, Shastine Lawrence. Here she is. <laughs> Good morning. And now for our statement of faith. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in our lives. God, the good omnipotence. Our daily word for today is taken from June 1953. The daily word for today is direction. The affirmation is, the light of God directs me, and I know the way to go. The scripture is from Psalm chapter 119, verse 168. For all my ways are before you. The reading says, the traveler is happy when they find a signpost at a crossroad. A person with a decision to make is happy when they gain information that will help them to pursue the best course of action. All along life's way, we desire assurance that we are going in the best direction. We are assured that we are going in the best direction when we open our minds and our hearts through prayer and meditation to the light of God, which shines clearly and steadily within us. There is no uncertainty, doubt, or fear when we are led by this kindly light. 
no matter what situation may arise, the loving guidance of God within us is sufficient for every need. The traveler does not ask to see the entire road ahead. They only want a sign to direct them. In any uncertainty, we do not have to see into the distant future. All we need is a ray from the God light within to indicate the next step ahead. One step at a time, taken with perfect confidence in our guide, will bring us safely and victoriously to our destination. Again, the daily word for today is direction. And the affirmation is, the light of God directs me, and I know the way to go. Namaste. Now, let's prepare our hearts and minds for meditation. Short in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy and the power and the glory and the presence of God right here, right now. Right here, right now. Wherever we are, wherever our footsteps are preparing to take us, that presence of God is with us and within us and we feel in these moments of guided meditation that divine presence surrounding us enfolding us enlivening us and reviving us for whatever the road ahead has for us 
And so wherever we are in these moments, with either a gentle gaze or eyes closed, we allow ourselves to lift our sights beyond all that has been. We breathe deeply that divine breath of God, allowing ourselves to relax, allowing ourselves to release, allowing ourselves to let go of yesterday and the day before and all that has passed away. In these moments, we share together wherever we may be. We embrace that still small voice, allowing it to speak to us, to show us our next steps, to show us our best direction here and now in the presence of spirit we listen and we rest for a few minutes now in the silence presence of God directs us. 
the presence of God is within us. The presence of God is our guide on the road ahead. In these moments, as we prepare to step out more fully in faith, as we prepare to take a courageous stand, as we prepare for new opportunities, as we prepare for new life, we are awake and alive to that presence of God, the Spirit within us, leading us on paths of joy, on paths of prosperity, and on paths of peace. We step forward onto the road ahead, and we are grateful for the thrill and the fun of the journey. And so it is, and so we move forward. We move ahead, and we are at peace. Amen. Finding myself at a loss for words, and the funny thing is, it's okay. The last thing I need is to be heard, but to hear what you would say. Word of God speak Would you pour down like rain Washing my eyes to see Your majesty To be still and know That you're in this place Please let me stay and rest In your home Word of God speak I'm finding myself 
in the midst of you beyond the music beyond the noise all that I need is to be with you and in the quiet hear your voice word of God speak would you pour down like rain washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and know that you're in this place please let me stay and rest in your holiness word of God speak would you pour down like rain washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and know that you're in this place please let me stay and rest in your holiness I'm finding myself at a loss for words and the funny thing is it's okay an inspirational teaching from Emmett Fox a 20th 20th century new thought master spiritual teacher and writer go ahead from his essay entitled remember lot's wife written sometime in the 1930s never look back always go right ahead even if you are quaking go right ahead and quake as you go jesus said the one who puts their hand to the plow and turns back is not worthy of the kingdom of heaven. He also said, remember Lot's wife. Those who look back are dead spiritually, and that usually means their spiritual material affairs have become stagnant too. Never look back. No matter how unattractive or how dangerous the road ahead may be, it is better than the road back. The road ahead may mean difficulty for you, but the road back means failure. The road ahead may be veiled from sight, but you must teach yourself to regard the unknown as friendly. Remember that God is always at the end of the road ahead but at the end of the road back, you will only find yourself. At the end of the road ahead, we will find God. But if we turn back, the only thing we will find at the end of the road is ourselves. Breathe that in, beloved community, for just a moment. The choice is before us as we reach this penultimate week of our series ready for revival. And so this is the week when I need to put a question mark at the end of this statement and ask, ready for revival? Are you ready? Or are you looking at the road back? Because at the end of the road back, all we're going to find is the same old, same old. 
And you know what else you find on the road on the way back? Burnt rubber. And those skid marks from the person who tried to turn around ahead of you. And that person you broke up with 25 years ago who's trying to be your Facebook friend and you're like, really? And they're asking, do you miss me? And we're so far on down the road. At the road back is that old job that we really didn't like. And so our answered prayer was that, you know, we kind of got made redundant. And we're like, oh, now I don't have a job. Oh, now I don't have a job. New road ahead. On the road back is the old stuff. Some of it that was painful, some of it that was stinky, some of it that was the failure that propelled us forward into something new. And so we are at a time in the middle of August in 2020 where we're feeling that tension, that friction, that discomfort of liking some things that were on the road back as we are, some of us, being dragged, kicking and screaming into whatever is supposed to be new and next. But the guidance is clear. The way ahead is forward. The way ahead is not back. And so if we want to answer to that question, ready for revival? Then we're going to need to leave some things behind and not turn around. And not only does that master teacher, Emmett Fox, give us one way to mystically, metaphysically understand 2020, he gives us two. The first one being that story that comes from Genesis 19th chapter. Abraham's already established part of a kingdom. Emmett Fox says to us, Jesus says to us, remember Lot's wife. Why do we need to remember Lot's wife? Because Lot and his wife and his family and bunches of people have been told by angels of the Lord that basically y'all got to get out of Dodge because it's going to rain down fire and brimstone and it's going to be crummy and God doesn't want you to be here. So get all your stuff and get a move on. And a whole bunch of people get the message. And they start to head out, except that Lot's wife, rather than looking ahead into the friendly unknown, turns around and becomes a pillar of salt. And everyone goes on ahead, and she is left behind. Now, there's two fabulous pieces of mystical, metaphysical understanding we can use in our lives right now. The first one is that an angel, angels of the Lord, came and spoke to the people. Each of us has an angel of the Lord. It might be our own still small voice. It might be our spouse, our partner, our beloved, who says, um, you know, we maybe need to. And the light goes off, and you're ready to move ahead. It could be a wonderful advisor. It could be a news report. It could be a friend who says they've been thinking about something, and it's exactly the thing we were thinking about. If you're waiting for somebody in white with wings to drop down and speak to you, that might not be how they're appearing. But each of us has a messenger, an angel of the Lord. 
The other important piece of this is what happens when someone becomes a pillar of salt. A standing pillar of salt represents a monument to an unbelieving heart, an unbelieving soul. It freezes and cannot move ahead because the past cannot be left behind, and so they go nowhere. To turn into a pillar of salt, to not receive that warning, that invitation from whoever that messenger, that angel of the Lord is, is to say that we're happier being stuck right where we are. You know, people say, the devil, you know, it's better than the devil, and you don't know. And now that's not exactly the focus that would get us forward. But we turn into that unbelieving monument when we don't trust that gentle God nudge that says the road ahead is for your highest and best. The road ahead is for your good. The road ahead is going to get you to the thing that's the next best direction for you. That is the thing that will get us ready for revival. The other wonderful teaching that comes out of this is Jesus in the first century talking to his followers, many of whom are basic working people who are agrarian, meaning they work the land. They're, they're farmers and planters. And so he uses that analogy. It comes up twice in the gospel according to the writer called Luke. That's how important this teaching is in both chapter 9 and chapter 17, that anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of heaven. I mean, if we're going to turn around, it's like basically saying, yeah, God, I heard you. I don't believe you. I'm going to do it my way. You know, and here's the wonderful thing about our teachings. We always have the choice. We can take the road ahead or we can turn around. And that's the beauty of focusing ahead if we are planting, if we are building, if we are wanting to grow something because the one who is furrowing the land with the plow wants to keep a straight line. They want to keep that single focus on where they're going. They don't want to look back. They don't want to be distracted by the past in the rear view mirror. They want to look at the road ahead. They want to get the ground ready for whatever is new and whatever is next. And here's the thing that we do sometimes. We like to replay stuff. You know, we get sometimes, sometimes when we're trying to meditate, someone send, send me emails and let me know that this happens to you when you meditate, but all of a sudden it's like the brain goes to rewind. Like, remember that time in 1987 when? Remember that thing they say, you know, and the brain's going, you know, our monkey minds like going back. They look out the rear view min windows. <laughs> when those things come up in our thoughts, it's to help us say, nope, that's behind me. I'm moving forward. I'm moving ahead. And so we get this opportunity, if we're truly ready for revival, 
to let go one more time of that woulda, coulda, shoulda, that rerunning the conversation where, you know, we had the great retort like 20 minutes later and it was all over. That thing we wish we had done, that opportunity we didn't grab, that job that, ugh, you know, it just wasn't us. Okay, it's done. We're done now. That relationship that didn't fit or maybe wasn't even healthy for us. Looking back stops us in our tracks because we become focused on something that is dead and done. But the road ahead, although it could be unknown, although it could have difficulties, invites us to trust that there's something better that something different is happening. You know, Emmett Fox kind of swings this one hard, and I wish I could find an exact date for you. Someone may be able to do an extensive search out there and tell me the date. But if we think about the 1930s in the world, there was a whole lot of brewing going on. There were countries in racial turmoil, and not just this one. There were economic hardships. There was illness. But there were people like Emmett Fox coming through and saying, look at the road ahead. The road ahead is friendly and that's where the revival is. The one who lives always looking back like this, you know, and we all have one in the family. They don't have anything to tell us about today, but you know, they got 40,000 stories about all the stuff that happened in the past, and usually it wasn't good stuff and we love them through it. But the one who looks back is already dead. They have said no to my question. I'm not ready for revival. I'm just gonna stand here and watch the world go by I'm going to stand here and say, I want it this way. Yep, I, we get you. Take 10 minutes with that, you know. Let's y'all get it out. And then move on. Because the road ahead is offering all of us something different. As soon as I hear from an angel of the Lord and know exactly what it is, I promise I'll tell you, and I wish that I could this Sunday, but I can't. But I believe that each of us has that presence of the Lord that, as our daily word said, is the light of the guide leading us forward into whatever it is. And so when I ask you, are you ready for revival? I hope wherever you are, you're saying yes. Because the road back is death. The road ahead is your hope because your destiny is ahead. And what does the teaching tell us? Is our destiny the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, which assures us of goodness, which assures us of abundance, which assures us of companionship, 
which assures us of creative expression, which assures us of life. Revival invites us to come back to life in brand new ways. I'll ask you one more time. Ready for revival? Are you ready? I hope, I pray that your answer is yes. I love you. Namaste. Thank you, Reverend Jen, for reminding us to listen to those messengers and that they come in all forms. And this so reminds me of the song from The Wiz, Ease On Down the Road. Ease on down, ease on down the road. Okay, uh, got a couple of announcements. Um, first of all, just want to remind you of Michael Wilkinson's Practicing the Presence Course in Miracles class on Sunday mornings. Our spirit groups are meeting on Monday nights. And they are talking about what if it all goes right. This Tuesday will be the monthly spiritual action group. It's Tuesday the 18th at 7. And the guest speaker is Dr. Karen Cox. She is a history professor at the University of North Carolina. She'll be talking about Southern monuments. She's written two books, been published in academic journals, and is a frequent contributor to CNN and the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. So I hope that you will join us on Zoom for that. Uh, we also have the Spiritual Cafe with Reverend Jen at noon on Tuesdays, the Solid Unity Prayer Service on Wednesday evenings at 7. And please save the date for Friday night, August 28th. The Youth and Family Ministry is hosting a family fun night, and it is for families of all ages. I think we'll be playing Scattergories. That should be fun. So please email Lachey at unityatl.org. She's our Youth and Family Ministry Director, and she can get you set up to join that. And also want you to save the date for Thursday, September the 10th. It is Unity's Worldwide Day of Prayer, and you'll be hearing a lot more about this coming up. I also want to remind you that you can find all this information in the newsletter, on the website, in the calendar. Um, if you do not get the newsletter, you can go to the website, unityatl.org, and click on the newsletter button at the top and just type in your email address, and you'll get the newsletter. It comes out every Thursday. And shout out to Linda Horton, who does a great job with that. Now, I also want to say thank you for your generosity, for your continued love offerings and donations. Uh, we are truly, truly grateful. I want to remind you that you can give by text, that you can give through, um, through the website and also through Venmo and Cash App. So now let's take our offering in our hands, hold it close to our heart. Let's start our offering affirmation together. Divine love through me blesses and increases all that I give all that I receive, and all that I have. I give in love because I am love, and I love to give, and so it is. Thank you, God, and amen. Where do I go when there's no one else to turn to? I talk to when there's no one who wants to listen who am I going to lean on when there's no foundation stable I go to the rock I know he's able I go to the rock I go to the rock of my salvation I go to the stone that the builders rejected I run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me The earth all around me is sinking sand On Christ the solid rock I stand When I need shelter, when I need a friend I go to the rock Where do I hide? 
When the storms have all passed over, where do I run to? When the winds of sorrow threaten, is there any? In my time of tribulation, when my soul needs consolation, I go to the rock. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the storm that the builders rejected. I run to the mountain, and the mountain stands by me. The earth all around me is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. When I need shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Thank you, Cam Austin, the Tower of Higher Power Band, John, Johnny, Simon, and Cam here with us. Thanks to Rob and Justine for being part of it, to our executive director, Pam Johnson, behind the scenes, Lachey Williams, Marilyn Hopkins, Linda Horton, Corey Stokes, Wes Johnson, Scott Johnson. We got a whole team, and we're so grateful for that team. We're so grateful for you, beloved virtual viewer, beloved Unity Atlanta members, congregants, followers, for all the ways that you bless us with your love and your light. And so we want to, as we prepare for the road ahead, share together this week's affirmation. This will help us get along the road. Know we post this on our social media every week, and you can share it, post it, hang it up right in front of your eyes so you can remind yourself to focus on the road ahead. So together we affirm, today I focus my sights on the road ahead and find my hope in a bright and glorious future. And so it is and so we do. And no journey would ever be complete to know that the road ahead, no matter what we may find, is friendly and welcoming our prayer for protection. So let's affirm that now together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Wherever I am, God is. Wherever you are, beloved virtual viewer, God is. God is your guide on the road ahead. We love you. We bless you. We are so grateful that you are with us. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you in all the classes and meetings yet to come. We love you. Namaste.